Hi, this is January 8th, and again, we're walking through the Bible using the One Year Bible, and we're answering the questions, who am I, who is God, and what the heck are we doing together? We're uh, reading in the passages, uh, the passage that we're reading today is Genesis 18, 16 through uh, chapter 19, 38. Matthew chapter 6, 25 through chapter 7, 14, and Psalm 8, 1 through 9, Proverbs 2, 6 through 15. And this passage in the Old Testament in Genesis is a very um, well-known passage. It's the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. A lot of people believe they know what happened. I don't know that we um, all know the details of it, so let's Let's talk about what we can learn about who we are and who who God is and what our relationship is. First thing that happens is that the three men, like we talked about yesterday, we were introduced to the fact that three men visited Abram, Abraham and Sarah. And I believe that the two men were angels because they continued on to Sodom and Gomorrah. And there is a scholarly belief that one of the men, uh, was the angel of the Lord, meaning it was Christ in flesh as a theophany. So I, it's not an intellectual pursuit that we're going through. We're having a conversation about how to answer these questions through the Bible. So that's not my purpose, but um, I just want to present that the three men uh, were presented as men, but they were actually angels and Christ in the flesh as a theophany in the Old Testament. And they sat down and they were talking to each other, the three men, um, and they said, should we hide from Abraham what we're going to do? So our relationship with God, a lot of times is he talks to the prophets before he's going to bring judgment, or he talks to the prophets and tells them what's going to happen in the hopes that in, in his mercy, and that the that the warning of judgment and the understanding of what's going to happen will help us change our minds and repent. Um, so they talked to Abraham about the fact that Sodom and Gomorrah is going to be destroyed. And um, it says because their sin is so flagrant. And Abraham is an intercessor. We can take a position as an intercessor. And he talks to the angel of the Lord, and he says, he says that, um, will you, if I, if you can find 50 men, 50 righteous people in Sodom, would you destroy it with 50 righteous men? Could you spare it if the, you find 50? And the Lord says yes. And then 40, and he says yes. And he says, if you find 30 righteous men, will you spare the city? And his mercy, he says, yes, 20. And he got down to 10. Abraham got down to 10 and said, 10. And the Lord said, yes, I will spare the city if I can find 10 righteous people. And um, that evening, it talks about the two angels coming into the city. And the city was wicked, very perverted and very dangerous. And Lot brings them into the two men who are angels of the Lord. He brings them into their home and all the Bible says all of the men of the city, young and old, came and they wanted to rape the men. They wanted to be perverted with them. And Lot, this is how messed up people can get sometimes when things just kind of go without stopping uh, toward evil. And Lot said, well, I'll give you my my two virgins. What, what's the deal with this? You know, he's trying to protect two men that are in his house, but he's going to give them the two women, his daughters. So, you know, it, it really shows uh, not our identity, but the things that we can wear. And mo it shows a mob mentality, um, the mo mob mentality where it just, you know, violence and, and rage and evil. And there's a whole group of people getting together and... Um, the, the results are not good. The angel of the Lord protects Lot and he blinds the men. They blind the men of the city and he protects the, the, the daughters also. And Lot 
was told to get out of the city, tell his family to get out of the city, get ready to flee. And the angel of the Lord, in, the, in God's mercy, because of Abraham, the angel of the Lord gave Lot time to pack up and get ready. And Lot hesitated, he procrastinated. We're such procrastinators. And it's really hard for us to believe what God says. And in his unbelief and procrastination, he, he just waited and he hesitated. And finally, the angels forced him, said, you've got to leave because we cannot do our job and destroy the city until you leave for Abraham's sake. And um, God was merciful. This is, this is who our God is. He was merciful. And all of the things that Lot had chosen uh, with Abraham interceding for the for the the righteous in the city of uh, Sodom, they uh, the angels took Lot, his two daughters, and his wife, and they told him, "Leave quickly! You have to leave, and you have to go up to the mountains." And it seems like, again, description of of us and and you know sometimes we just think we're smarter and we're more righteous and. And Lot had a better plan. He said, oh, I don't want to go up to the mountain. Can I go over here to the city? The angel says, yes, just basically just get going so that we can do what we're called, you know, what we were assigned to do. But God had listened to Abraham's request and kept Lot safe. The city was destroyed. I believe the main sin was pride. And uh, it, it manifested in all sorts of perverted evil. And the city was destroyed because it was it was great evil. Um, and then there is an account that, you know, who says the Bible isn't interesting. Definitely PG-13, maybe R. It talks about uh, the perversion of the two daughters and Lot and poor the Lot's wife. He, she looked back and she was destroyed. So um, it was just it really shows the deprivation that uh, that that sin, you know, I have a brother who says sin destroys. That is so obvious when we look at it, but sin does destroy. And it destroyed um, this this family, all of their stuff, and the and this great city that was full of sin. And it just again, sin begets sin. Sin, you know, the fruit of sin is more sin, and it just gets worse and worse and worse. And in God's judgment in his God, in God's wisdom. He said, enough is enough. We're going to stop it right here. So we get to Matthew chapter six and verse 25. And once again, God is talking to uh, us as a, um, and he's telling us how valuable we are. So let me read it to you. Don't worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food or drink or enough clothes to wear. Isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing look at the birds they don't plant or harvest or store food in barns for your heavenly father feeds them and aren't you more more valuable to him than they are let me say that again and aren't you far more valuable to him than they are can all your worries add a single moment to your life one day i was struggling as we all do in life and I said oh I could just I could just do this if I if I knew what my value was if I knew I was valuable to somebody and I was crying out to God and he he heard me and I opened up the scripture randomly and I got to this part and I kept reading because that's what I do sometimes I just keep reading until there's this great light that says hey this is for you and I got to that part aren't you much more valuable than they and I thought, oh, I am valuable to God. And it talks about him taking care of the lilies of the field. And then once again, he says, uh, he'll certainly care for you. If he takes care of the flowers and the birds, of course, he's going to take care of you. He, you're much more valuable to him than the things that he provided for us in creation. And uh, your heavenly father. So he's, he's presenting himself again as a heavenly father. And sometimes we, we have negative thoughts about fathers, but it's a comparison. No earthly father can compare to our heavenly father. So if there's something that you were missing in your, in your father relationship, 
just think, God provided that for you. Uh, and he provides a, a good role model as a father. He's a heavenly father. He takes care of our needs. And he tells us, seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he'll give you everything you need. The King James says, seek first the kingdom of God. And in Romans 14, 17, it tells us what the kingdom of God is. It's righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. So look for those things first. Seek for those first and you'll find that everything else comes with it. So don't worry about tomorrow. And then there's a powerful scripture on our relationship. The Bible says, for everyone who asks receives. Everyone who seeks finds. And to everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. So it's the asking that gets the receiving. It's the seeking that helps us to find. And it's the knock that opens the door. And he says, he compares us, you know, he says, your, your, your heavenly father is much greater than, um, you, you know, your earthly father, but compare your earthly father. Would your earthly father give you a stone if you asked for, for, uh, if you asked for bread? No, of course not. And he's much more perfect than our earthly fathers. And he gives us good gifts when we ask. And uh, down to Psalms, again, it's so powerful with who God is and what our relationship is. He, he reveals himself once again as the Lord, majestic. His name fills the earth. He's huge. His glory is higher than the heavens. And he, um, he's the creator. When I look at the night sky, if you're if you have the right glasses on and your eyes are are not dim, uh, if you look up at the sky, you can see the Creator. How big God is! He said, "When I look at the night sky and I see the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you set in place, I think, of, who am I? Who am I, a mere mortal, that you should think about me? Who am I? If you think about this, the God that created." All that we see that is so hard to understand, like we, science can't even explain all of the things that we, we see in science and creation. And yet he considers us. That is overwhelming. Absolutely overwhelming. He made us um, a little bit lower than God and he crowned us with glory and honor. He gave us charge over everything that he made. And wisdom, he gave us wisdom. And there's so, so much more, so much more. So mine this treasure for yourself and find out who God is, who you are, and what are we doing together? I hope that you are coming to him with all of your needs and not worrying and depending on him as your heavenly father. Have a blessed day.